Bless the Lord, guys. How y'all doing tonight? Come on, I dare you just to open up your mouth and just say, God, you've been great to me all day. We want to invite you to worship with us tonight. Lift your voices, lift your hands, clap them hands, all you people, and shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Come on, hands are clapping now. Go. Wonderful night to praise God. Come on, let's sing to him. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. Yes. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Yes, God. And these are the days of a great trial, famine and darkness and sword. We are the pains in the desert, crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. You say, come on, let's sing it. His presence, let's bring it in the place. Hey, at the trumpet's call, lift your voice. Out of science, you Let's sing it again. Behold, it comes. days of Ezekiel, those dry bones are coming as flesh, hallelujah, and these are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding the temple of praise, yes God, and these are the days of great harvest, hey, those fields are white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. You say, Come on, let's sing it. Of God right now. Bless them as they worship tonight. Come on, let's make 
make this praise glorious. Say, there's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. Everybody. There's no God like Jehovah. Yes, God. There's no God like Jehovah. Yeah. There's no God like Jehovah. I don't know about you, but I feel freedom. I feel a praise stirring up. There's no other God. No other God. Raise your voices like a mighty trumpet. Raise your voices. Raise this up. Come on. Raise this up. Jesus. 
Come on, somebody's life is going to be changed tonight by the presence and the power of God Almighty. Lift those hands right now. We're going to open your mouth and worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Great and mighty is our God. Marvelous is our King. Come on, somebody speak well of Him all over this room. Come on. My soul will make a boast to the Lord. Say something about Him that is awesome. You're great. You're mighty. You give life. You are love. You bring light into darkness. You give hope, God. You restore every heart that is broken. Yeah. Come on, hands up. Great are you, Lord. Join with us, everyone. It's your breath in our lungs. Yes. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. Yes. In our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Father, tonight we make it more than just a song. We ask you to touch it right now. Speak on it, God, right now. Come on, you give life. You give life. Let's sing it. You are love. Oh, you bring life to the time. Oh, you give hope, Jesus. Man. You restore every heart that is broken. Come on, lift your hands. If you need them tonight, just lift it high and say, Great.
on and sing it. this opportunity to praise him come on he brought you a mighty long way to get to where you are right now go ahead and give him some thanks ah, he came all the way down to wherever you were and he found you but he didn't leave you the way he found you somebody needs to give him some praise tonight somebody needs to lift your voice and glorify the God that brought you all the way out you know I'm telling you the truth tonight. Go ahead and give him a shout that lets the devil know you got the life of God in you and there's no turning back. Hallelujah! You've heard Pastor Parsley say it. The only reason for you to have a body is to give expression to the life that's in it. Somebody go ahead and give some expression to the life God gave you. Yeah! Hallelujah! I don't know whether there's anybody that came expecting tonight, but I'm expecting God to do something for me and for you here. Look at somebody next to you and say, I'm expecting God to do something. Amen. Amen. Everyone stand with me, please. Everyone stand all across this great tabernacle. We're going to get right into the Word of God tonight. We're continuing our Daughters of Faith series, and our guest tonight, uh, I appreciate her in, for so many different reasons. One is that she and her husband pastor a great church in Omaha, Nebraska. Now, somebody said, well, Somebody said to Pastor Parsley one time, you know, if you'd move to Dallas or if you'd move to Atlanta or someplace like that, you could probably have 
a lot more people. He said, there's a problem with that. And they said, what's that? He said, I got to go where God called me. Because people in Columbus, Ohio need to hear the gospel too. People in Omaha, Nebraska need to hear the gospel too. Amen. Another thing that I appreciate about her is that she and her husband pastor a great church there in Omaha and they minister together in the gifts of the Spirit. I, 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 40 years ago this year, I moved to go to Bible college and I saw a pastor and his wife flow in the gifts of the Spirit like that and I thought, man, that's, that's, that's unique. Well, it's not unique, but it is rare. And thank God our guest tonight operates in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. You know, it's just a, just a really good thing for in Pentecostal churches, people to see the gifts of the Spirit in manifestation. Amen? Amen. And another thing that I appreciate about her is that she makes no apologies for being called and anointed of God to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. And there's a whole lot more reasons too, but I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to have to get out the way. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to welcome here to World Harvest Church, one of our daughters of faith from Lord of Hosts Church in Omaha, Nebraska, Sister Brenda Kuhneman. Amen and amen. Stay standing for just a few moments. Here's what I want to do tonight before we get into the Word of God. I want you to think of one thing. Come on, just one thing that God did specific. Now be specific. I know He's a big God and God does lots of things. But I want you to just hone in on one unique thing that God did for you. Not yesterday. Come on, somebody. That God did for you. Did I lose something back there? Thank you, brother. That God did for you, not yesterday, but today. Come on. Just work, work it up in your brain for just a moment. Come on, think about it right now. Think real good. Think about breakfast. Think about your lunchtime. Come on, there's something in there. See, where Israel got in trouble. Are you listening to me? They got in trouble because the Bible said they forgot. They got on the other side of the Red Sea. They had a worship service. Women had their tambourines out. They had a party in the spirit. And then three days later, look at your neighbor, say three days later. They came up on some bad water and they forgot. The Bible said they forgot. They forgot. Psalm says he, they forgot his works. And they began to complain and accuse God and accuse Moses. See, what happens is if we don't remember something that God did today. Come on, are there some believers in the house that believe that God did something great this day? Come on, lift your hands to heaven and think and verbalize with your mouth what God did for you today. Think of it in your mind and say it out loud. Mark it down as a moment that God did this for me today. Come on, say it, say it, say it, say it. Oh, hallelujah all across this room. All right, did you think of it? Did you name it? All right, if you are super thankful, then I want you to give God a great big shout. Hallelujah! I'll tell you what my thankful thing was. We had some delays trying to get here. And there's that. Hank and I, usually when we travel, we don't. We always keep our bag with us. But the gate agent said, if you're going to make that next flight, check the bag all the way to Columbus. And it was so fast in between. I said, Jesus, I'm preaching at World Harvest Church in flip-flops. <laughs> Help us, Lord. And I got on the plane and I heard the Holy Spirit said, no, your, your, your bag's on the plane. 
And I said, Lord, that better be you and not the devil. <laughs> and of course we got off and it was there. And so I'm thankful tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, give your neighbor a knuckle touch and love them on the way down to your chair. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it is so, such a privilege to be here tonight and be a part of this, not only this awesome church, but just be part of this Daughters of Faith, kind of this campaign, this month, this month of focus. Aren't you glad that you go to a church that believes in women preachers? And, you know, there's a lot more of them than ever used to be, but, you know, they're, they're not everywhere. And, and not only, when some will say that they kind of believe in women preachers, but I'm talking about a church that truly believes in the gifts and the calling and the anointing upon women. And I'm just honored to be a part of that. Um, and, you know, and I'll tell you a little bit about just my testimony. Those of you that don't know that much about us. Yes, we pastor in Omaha, Nebraska. Can anything good come out of Omaha, Nebraska? I've had people say, Omaha, Nebraska, it's in the center of the country. And they'll say, where is it? And, but yes, things are happening in Omaha. And, um, but my, my testimony coming into the ministry, and maybe this is an encouragement just before we get into the word to encourage somebody, is I started out, I wasn't raised in preacher's family, neither Hank or I were raised in ministers. By the way, my honey's not here tonight. He's home. It's his birthday today. He's turned, if, I don't know if he's watching. Our sons were gonna take him to supper, but he's 51 years old. And... Two weeks ago, I turned 50, so we're now both in the 50 club, together. But my, so maybe this will be encouragement somebody. We, um, so when neither one of us were raised from ministry family, we both started, you know, uh, from just fresh, just right out. I got born again. I was raised in a Christian home, but a denominational Christian home. My parents um, loved God, but we weren't spirit filled. We went to an Episcopal church. And, you know, how many of you know Episcopalian and Pentecost? My arms don't even go that far apart. And so I, I, we had gotten filled. Somebody had introduced us, had given uh, my father a little book by a man, I'm sure you never heard of him, called Kenneth E. Hagen. It all went down from there, man. And it said, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I was 14 years old and I said, I'm gonna do that. I don't know what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but it sounds good enough, I'm doing it. And I went in the, my, in the bathroom in my house because I figured if anybody, there was anybody listening, they couldn't hear me and wouldn't bother me in the bathroom if they heard me speak in tongues. So I went in there all by myself and he had the steps in the back of the book. And he said, how to be filled with the Spirit. And I went down step by step and I spoke with other tongues. Well, then after that, somebody else invited, we lived in Central Florida at that time, somebody else invited us to a, a, a camp meeting or a meeting by this guy, I'm sure you've never heard of him either, named Kenneth Copeland. I've never been in a Pentecostal meeting before. People lifted their hands. I thought they were asking a question. I said, I don't know what's going on in here, but this is good. Something, something, I felt something. And I sat there up in the huge, the, we were in the Civic Arena Center and I sat up there as a 15 year old girl. And I said, well, now I'm talking in a funny language. And, and then Gloria began to preach. And I said, I don't know what it is about her. She preached for three hours. She did a, first of all, in the church that I grew up, nobody went to, to, to church on Saturday morning. Saturday morning, we sat there for three hours and she taught on divine healing. And I don't know, I didn't get any dream or vision. God didn't come down to call me to the ministry and have me eat a scroll and take me to heaven three times. I mean, that's great if that happens. I didn't get anything like that. I just saw Gloria preach and said, I want to be her. So I'd go home. 
I'd go home and I'd get out my mother's ironing board and I'd set it up and I'd put my Bible out. I ordered and memorized every, out of my allowance, I supported the Copelands. I was 15 years old and I would send them offerings. I became a partner. I'm sure those little $2 didn't mean a lot to them, but boy, they meant a lot to me. And I remember sending those in and getting her tapes. And I memorized all the tapes. I could, I could preach and prophesy Hebrews 11.1 1, just like Gloria. And I practiced on my mother's ironing board. Nobody knew it. Well, my parents then enrolled my sister and I in Christian school. And I thought everybody spoke in tongues and loved women preachers. <laughs> the school was Baptist. And not Baptocostal. So I got in and I started talking to people about speaking in tongues. And they said, don't you know that? So the devil. And I said, I don't know. I feel so good. When I had the devil before tongues, I didn't feel so good. But now I'm excited. I don't know. I, I read the Bible. I, can, I can't wipe the smile off my face. So they said, that's of the devil. And then they'd say, I was in high school by this time. They'd say, what do you want to be when you get out of high school? So we had to do term papers. And I said, well, I don't know what I want to be, but inside I want to be Gloria Copeland. I said, I don't know. And, 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 and that was the way God uses. See, God uses different things to call different people different ways. And, and there weren't a lot of preachers, women preachers back then. This was in 1982. So there were not, a, I mean, there's a lot more women preachers now. The only ones I knew of them was Gloria on TV and Marilyn Hickey on the radio, 15 minutes a day. And, and so there weren't a lot of women back then. So I told them, well, I want to preach. They said, preach. You mean you're going to be a pastor's wife? I said, well, yeah, I hope so, but I want to preach too. They said, oh, now see, if you if spoke in tongues, you had the devil. If you were a woman preacher, you were akin to Jezebel. But let me just encourage you. And I know there's probably some of the Valor students here today. Amen. Is this your group right over here? Well, I'll tell you, you know, women preachers, I know this is for somebody in this room. Maybe you're not a woman preacher. Maybe you just desire the ministry or whatever it is that God has put in your spirit. You know, nobody is going to be able to take that away from you. The Bible says that promotion comes not from the east or the west. It comes from God. And I don't care if you're somewhere where they, maybe you're out on the workplace or you have family members that said, we don't believe in that church you go to or we're anti this or anti that. Listen, you just stay strong with God. God will bring your vision and your dream to Pass. He'll do it. And you know, all those years of that time of persecution, you know, one thing it did for me is when they told me tongues was of the devil, it got me studying my Bible. And I thought, you know, and I'd argue, sometimes they'd try to argue with me about, you know, Pentecost and all of that. And I remember I'd spend hours, you know, rather than go out with friends, I'd spend hours studying the scriptures I, I knew every verse on speaking in tongues and the Holy Spirit. I thought, well, if they ever come back to me, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to tell them like it is. And they never did, but God used that for that season to grow me and prepare me for what the future had to bring. So don't ever get discouraged. You know, you don't have to force your gift. You don't have to prove to the eldership you're a prophet. You don't have to do it. God will promote you. God will get you places. He'll find you. Listen, if you, the only place to preach is to the kitchen dishes. Start there. Just do what God has called you to do. And I promise you, I, God will promote you. God will get you there. If it's of him and if it's not of him, you don't want to be there anyway. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, that was for somebody. Praise the Lord. Well, let's go to the Bible. I'm just glad to be in a church that welcomes women preachers and celebrates the gifts on women. So let's talk about, I want to talk tonight just for a few minutes, the minutes that we have together. I want to talk about the year 2017. Somebody say 2017. 
We're going to go to Isaiah 42, Isaiah 42 and verse 9. And this is a very prophetic and key year. This is a special year. 2017, uh, we shouldn't look at it like any other year. And see, the tendency that we have to do with specific calendar years, we get all excited uh, at the end of December. We get excited for January the 31st, and we're ready to say goodbye to all the junk from the previous year, and we're excited to welcome in uh, January. We're ready to start that new diet that lasts about three weeks, and, and and, you know, we're going to buy a new treadmill and we're going to have all these life changes and, and we're looking forward to something fresh and something brand new. But I, I believe 2017 is not like any other year. It's a supernatural prophetic year. Look at Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 9. It says these words, behold the former things. Somebody say former things. The former things have come to pass. Somebody say they've come to pass. That means the former things are over. They're done. They're done, brother. They're behind you now. They've already happened. They've come to pass. You can't change it. You cannot fix it. You can't alter it. It's in the books. 2016 is in the books. Yesterday is in the books. The former things are in the book. It's already happened. What's behind 2017 is already in the books. It's over. We can't go back and revisit it. So we have to look at this year, 2017, as a unique special divine prophetic season. Why do I believe it is a divine prophetic season? This year, 2017, marks the 500th anniversary of the great reformation of Martin Luther when there was a divine shift and he nailed the thesis to the wall. And now today we are living in the revelation, the church, the church world lives in the revelation that the just cannot earn their way to heaven, but the just must live by faith. And we are sailing on that revelation 500 years later. We celebrate that in 2017. 2017 also marks the, uh, uh, shares the year of Jubilee, a 50 year celebration. Come on, when things are shifting, things are changing. Come on, bondages are breaking off, debts are being forgiven. And that means that all season of what has been has come to pass. And we're shifting into a different time frame. 27, so the Lord began to speak to Hank and I. Every year we pray. God uses us in different ways prophetically. And every year we pray about what the next year holds. What, you know, God, what are you saying about that year? And we were driving home, he and I, after a service one Sunday, we've been praying, you know, we always try to get the mind of God together. And he said, the car was quiet. And he said, transfer. And I said, what did you say? He said, transfer. I just, and my spirit just shut up. And I said, Lord, something is being transferred in 2017 to the body of Christ. There are things that have been shut up. Come on, somebody. They've been held back. They have been, they have been hindered by the enemy. There has been some resistance against the body of Christ. Come on, everywhere I go, there are people that will say, Pastor Brenda, you don't know how hard this season has been. I don't know the last time I feel like I saw a real miracle. My children are on drugs. My family, there's struggles that are taking place. I don't know what else to do. I've prayed. I've sown some seed. I've fasted. I don't know what else to do. It's been a hard season. Come on, all you have to do is look at social media. You can put a good word out and somebody will say, oh, it's been terrible. I see them all the time. Former season has come to pass. 2017, the Lord began to deal with us that 2017 was a year to expect divine transfers, divine shifts, divine things coming that are in heaven, that are being given to the body of Christ, that are being handed to us supernaturally by the hand of heaven. Now, here's the thing. Let me say this before we get into that. 
you'll hear sometimes different prophetic vessels that will say different things about different years. How many of you know? Um, you know, 2007 is going to be like heaven. 2008, we can't wait. You know, whatever. I don't know. They always have to rhyme or something. It's, I don't know. I find that interesting. I mean, I suppose it can be like that. 2009, we're not going to be left behind. 2010, we're all going to do it again. You know. And, and, and that's all right. But, but here's the thing. Different prophetic vessels will speak different things. They all have a different take, a different revelation. And that's okay. That's why we got four gospels. That's why, you know, Matthew's take was a little different than Luke. That's why you've got the prophets of the Old Testament. Some of them saw him as a, as a victorious, resurrected Christ. And some of them described him as a crucified Christ. We saw different examples of, 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 uh, in, in the, of the Old Testament prophets who spoke different things about Jesus, different things about the future. So, you know, you may have one prophetic ministry declare something about 2017. Others declare something else. Does it make one or the other wrong or right? No, it just takes all of us. Come on, the counsel of God, the mind of God can't come from one or two vessels. It takes all of us to prophesy the mind, the will, and the intent of God. That's what the prophetic is. It's to, to show forth God's intention and God's plan and his desire and his purpose. But what the Lord spoke to us is he said 2017 will be a year of divine transfer. Now, some people will come up and they'll say, you're talking about wealth transfer. Well, no, that's a part of it. That's a part of it. There's wealth transfers included in that. But it's so much more than that. It's things that are, come on, the word transfer, if you were to define it, the word transfer means to shift from one location to another. Did you, did you, did you catch that? To shift from one location to another location. In the legal sense, it means to take possession of. Or to be in control of something. Come on, I believe there are things that are coming into the hands and under the control and the governance of the body of Christ beginning in 2017 like we have never, ever seen before. The world's going to realize we're not going away. We're here to stay. We're here to make our voice be heard. They're going to be forced to stand up and notice. So 2017 is a year that will mark blessings from God in a supernatural prophetic way. And I'm going to, I want to share with you just for a few minutes, some of the divine transfers that the Lord began to put in our spirit. I'm going to hone in on one that I feel very strong and prophetically that is resting upon this house. Here's the thing. If you are a part of this church, as it goes with the house, so it goes with you. Okay, can I tell you that? That is very important to know that. A lot of people in this day and age take their church membership or attendance or church connection as something indifferent. And, you know, in fact, uh, we, we're getting ready to do a remodel on the front of our building. And the Lord spoke to me as we were tearing off the reface. And as uh, the Lord spoke to me one Sunday and he said, as you tell the people that as you tear the front off, and part of that will include our roof at the front. And as you tear the roof off, so will I remove limitations and walls and ceilings of limitations from the people. As it goes with your church. Come on. As it goes with the house, the blessings, what God is prophesying, what God has declared for this season rests upon the people that connect to the vision. Hallelujah. So God is saying there are things that are going to come into the control of the hands of the church. Come on, we are watching politically. Political powers are being shifted right now. They're being shaken. We're, we're seeing the church voice being shaken loose in a political sense in a different way than we've ever seen. Yeah, there's going to be backlash. There's persecution. Come on, the devil's still the devil. 
You understand that? He's still going to be the devil. He doesn't want us to, to put the word of God out there. But at the same time, there are things being shifted into the hands of the church that are going to enable us to preach the gospel freely. Paul said it this way, 1 Thessalonians 2.18. He said, I would have done this or that, but Satan has hindered us. There are some hindrances. May I prophesy to you, there are some hindrances that are from an old season that are coming down and the church is about to be loose. And your life is about to be loosed in a whole supernatural way. You're about to be loosed to preach. You're about to be loosed to prophesy. You're about to be loosed to reach the lost. And I prophesy there are some of your family that are about to come in because you're about to be loosed and set free. Hallelujah! You believe it? Shout amen. amen. Now let me give you very briefly some of these transfers that the Lord has talked to us about. We've been preaching these in our own church. And then I want to hone in on the one that I feel is so important for this church. And, um, and I've preached this other places, but I feel there is something hovering over World Harvest Church. And, and, and we'll, let's just see what God has. We'll prophesy to that. But there are seven transfers, divine transfers, that the Lord began to deal with us about in our ministry. That, let me just give these to you very quickly. You can see them all in the life of Adam and Eve. And they were all in the Garden of Eden in their life. Number one is uh, the divine transfer of God's spirit and his presence coming afresh upon his people. Here's the thing. The scripture says that when God made Adam, he breathed. Come on, you know the verse. He breathed into Adam the breaths of life. Now, there are scholars that will say this, this didn't happen kind of like we would envision God coming down like mouth to mouth. Are you following me? Didn't happen like that. It happened like the day of Pentecost. God came into Adam. Come on, how did the Holy Spirit come in Acts the second chapter? He sat upon each of them and filled them, the Bible says. He filled them and then out of their mouth, they began to speak with other tongues. When God filled Adam in the garden, he didn't breathe into him, he entered him and out of him came not just breath, but the way the Hebrew word really reads it, it is out of him in, in his inner man came the breaths, plural, of life. God's spirit entered Adam and he was filled with life. Come on, I prophesy that 2017 is a year that the Spirit of God is going to be outpoured afresh. If there was any time like this time in history that we need a fresh outpouring. Come on, I'm tired of church that's just filled with programs. I don't want to just be out there handing out cookies to try to get people to come in and sit down and hear a nice little milk toast message. I'm tired of church like that. So I like coming here. I don't, I don't like church that's quiet either. I like people to run and fall all over the place. It's the only way I know how to be. Loud. God likes it loud. But if there's ever a time we need a, a fresh, come on, window. I, I don't want to just read about the Bible days of old or the revivals of the 50s or the, or, or the 70s when Brother Hagin, they talked about the glory would roll in from the back and everybody be laid on the ground and the preacher couldn't preach and everybody's laid out. God just took over the service and God just moved. Come on, I think there's a fresh outpouring of God's spirit. His presence. Come on, there's got to be. I, I, I. Let me say it like this. We were sitting with a preacher at lunch just recently and just talking about ministry. And the, that preacher said, you know, a lot of these generals and people that we've known from the 50s and years gone by, they've gone on to glory. They've gone home. Listen to me, Valor students. They've gone home. And he sat there, we're all in our 50s. We joined the 50 Club. And he said, it hit me like a ton of bricks. 
I said to myself, self, we're it. You mean to tell me the best days are behind us? I think not. There is another great wave. Another move of Pentecost. Where it's all right to speak in tongues in church on a Sunday morning. It's okay to dance. It's okay to watch, wait for it. It's okay to cast out a devil. Now we've gotten all nice. We gotta counsel everybody. And I'm not saying there's not a place for that. You know, you gotta talk to the soul of people, but sometimes all oh, the best thing you can do with some folks is say, come out. And they might get mad, I get it. Try it with your children. Hank and I do that with each other. We're pretty free. People say, how do you learn how to prophesy? We practice on each other. And so whenever, you know, we, had a, we have a marital impasse. If you want to get right down with it, you can call it an argument. If it's a real intense day, you got a strong-headed woman involved. That'd be me. Um, you could call it a fight. But here's how we've always dealt with it. Whenever it gets too heated, it gets a little bit intense, we're real bold, man. We go for the jugular. You know, don't, don't, don't try to, you know, uh, come here, honey. Give, uh, let, let me give you a hug. My husband doesn't roll that way. He, he should be so glad he got me. We, we, just, we just turn around if it gets hot enough and somebody gets worked up enough, we just say, come out. I bind that. And, and, and the thing of it is, you don't want to be the one that's not spiritual. How dare you tell my devil to come out? You first. <laughs> now, but here's the thing. We, we've spent so much time now in the church world trying to counsel people. Everybody wants his soft. Everybody wants my pastor to pat me on the back and, and just tell me something nice. You know, I, 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 I get tired. You have to go to church. In fact, Hank, man, he preached on Sunday morning in our church. He was so bold. And I said, I like that. I, I, I want to hear preaching that convicts me, that challenges me. Now everything has become a success seminar. Come on, I believe there is a divine transfer of God's spirit and his presence being poured out in a fresh way. You don't have to counsel nobody. You don't have to tell anybody that, that they need their back strung. No, there's a divine transfer that makes people get free. Coerce people to get saved. We're sorry if what we did this Sunday scared you. I heard a preacher one time say, I, I heard this on a podcast. I'm not being critical, I'm just being real. Heard him on a podcast say, now I'm going to mention a really scary word right now. I'm so sorry if this word scares you. I'm waiting for it. It's the word tithing. <laughs> I about, I was, we were driving in the car, I about bit half the steering wheel off. I thought, what in the world? Come on, we have softened the message of the gospel so much that we are trying to coerce people into the kingdom. There is another outpouring and it's waiting for us. A transfer of his spirit and his presence. God is breathing life once again. The second divine transfer that's coming very quickly is the transfer of dominion and authority. God gave Adam dominion in the garden. And guess what? He said it like this. He said to dress it and to keep it. That means he had to be in control of his area. Right? Right now, we live in a culture where the world is trying to extract control away from the church. They don't want us to have a say in the council meeting. They don't want us to have a say at the hospital. They don't want us to have a say at, at the 
it. Even at the charity fundraiser, they don't want no faith people. Come on, they want to do interfaith and mix everything together. So it's like, you know, the days of the Old Testament, there were false mixtures, a little bit of Baal and a little bit of God. They, 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 this, this, this is not going to fly in heaven. There's not a, a, it's okay to live this way. Like the world will say a man can marry a man. But God didn't say it like that. He said, no, a man and a woman go together. A man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife. Just because the culture changes it doesn't mean God changes it. He said, I'm God and I change not. So God is releasing dominion on the people now. We're going to walk into places like one big bad self. I'm not saying be cocky. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking cocky. We're just talking you're confident. Rather than walk in, oh, I got to go to the family reunion again. Everybody's a heathen. Come on, listen, there's no ground like the family reunion ground. Come on. The crazy uncle the drunk, the fighting couple. I mean, they all there. Come on, sister, preach my message for me. They all there. They all there. Yeah. Y'all know what I'm saying. And you dread going. You think, oh God, I'm saved. I, I got to go in there. No, those people don't hear what I have to say. They think I'm crazy anyway. No, something's shifting in 2017. We're coming into a season in the spirit where you're going to walk in and suddenly they're going, come on, they're watching you on Facebook. Don't think they're not. They're hearing, they're watching you post those scriptures. They're praying and you don't even know about it. Come on, there is something happening. There's a dominion that's coming back to the body of Christ where we're going to be in the highest places of the land and people are going to want to hear again from the prophets. The prophets are going to prophesy to the kings. Dominion and authority, divine transfer. It's not just for the preachers, it's for the people, the body of Christ. The third one, third divine transfer is the transfer of God's desires. Oh, watch this now. And his delights. Come on, Adam didn't know he wanted Eve till she showed up. And she came in that scantily dressed apparel and he took one look at her he didn't even know he needed her he didn't know she was his desire and his delight and he's like whoa man yeah you know that that's how they got their name right whoa man here's the thing desires and God give you the desires and delights Here, here's the thing I, I, I tell people this this is this is a time to that God wants to bless you in ways that it, and I'm not just talking about the stuff you need all right now hear this here 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 I, I okay I like aquariums I'm a, I'm a fish keeper all right I have 10 of them and uh, I love it I, I love to get my hands all in that fish doo-doo and all that you, I know. It's cool though. I love fish. I, lo I love aquariums. And so, and my husband is a model train guy. And he has this huge model train layout. In fact, Hank, I know you wanted me to go preach so that you could go get trains today. I know that's what happened. But here's the deal. Uh, so we like all these things. Do you know we pray and ask God to, to supply us deals and bargains, say, for, for trains? Are, are, are you listening to me uh, uh, for a query? God, I know that's a $50 fish, but I want it real bad. And, and, and I'm not saying just go be covetousness, you know, covet, you know, but that's what people will do. So we don't pray about that stuff, but we go get in debt and get it anyway. We still want the stuff, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's for you. It's the, the new Harley, whatever it is. You know, we'll still find a way. We still want this stuff. We don't pray about it because we think God doesn't want us to have that stuff. So then we just, we just go out and get it anyhow. You know, we'll pray about the mortgage. We'll pray about the rent. We pray about the, the need for the food and the babies and all of that stuff that feels like that's important to God. But God cares about your delights. 
He likes stuff that makes you happy. Come on, woman, do you want some new curtains? Ask God. God likes new curtains too. He's got pretty curtains in heaven. He's got streets of gold and a gate made out of one big pearl. I think he doesn't mind if you have some decent stuff. Hank and I started the ministry. We were so broke. Oh my goodness, I can't even tell you. And all those years. And so I told the Lord one time, I said, God, we had so many stories. But I said, Lord, one time I told the Lord, I said, God, I'm tired of being the person at the dinner table. You know, you go out with six or eight people, you know how it goes, and you kind of everybody, when it come, everybody gets done with dessert, uh, you kind of, the waitress will say, uh, is this one check? Everybody get all fidgety. And, oh, well, uh, and they kind of try to look at the other person. Act, come on, you know what I'm saying. And I said, Lord, I want to be able to say, I'll take the check. Six or eight people. And we were young back then. And I said, Lord, that's, that's how I want to function. I want to operate like that. And, and you know what? I made that my desire. And I said, Lord, until that happens, I want to see that. That's a next level for me. Come on, we got to break out of not thinking that the simple things of God, there is a divine transfer that is bringing the delights and the desire. Come on, God told Israel, he said, I'm going to give you not an ugly land, not a destitute land. I'm going to bring you to a delightsome land. Desires and delights. Come on, pray about big stuff. In 2017, there's a transfer bringing your desires, come on, and your delights to pass. Listen to me, single people. This is the time you're praying for a spouse. All the college students are over there trying not to act nervous. But you want to stay single forever? 2017 is a year to make your list. This is what I want. My children asked me, they said, what did you pray? How did you know dad was the one? I said, God, I want to marry a prophet. He came along prophesying. I said, I, I took one look. I said, well, he's the only one. We went to a church, nobody prophesied. I said, there's nobody else in this whole church prophesying. He's got to be the right one. I ain't deep, man. God's desires, God's delights. Come on, pray for big stuff in 2017. Come on, there's something shifting. Things are being transferred to bless you in ways. There are things that you haven't even thought of that you, like Adam with Eve, come on, pray. Say, God, God surprised me. <laughs> Woo! The fourth one, the divine transfer of provision. I just finished a book recently called Positioning Yourself for Money Miracles. And somebody asked me, I said, why did you write that? That title is kind of funky. You know, like your money grabbing or something like that. And I said, no, I wrote it because if I were to ask in most churches for a prayer line that somebody had a financial need, almost 98% of the church would come to the front. Come on, in 2017, it's time, it's time for the body of Christ to come out of broke thinking. There is a transfer of provision. Come on, divine transfer of God providing all that you need. Come on, can God pay off some houses? I said, yeah. yeah. Can God wipe out debt in a day? I'll tell you, absolutely it can. I remember early in our ministry, I mean, we, we prayed everything was a fast. We said, God, we didn't even have a quarter. We, we would go to dig in the car seat to get a quarter to buy the newspaper. My husband's a football lover. I'm sorry, he's a corn husker. This is Buckeye country. Woohoo! Y'all don't sound that convinced. Are there Buckeyes in this house? Well, we're from Nebraska. So we're, we're a different big red, but, but here's the thing. He loved college football in the morning and, and we'd have no money to buy a paper. And, and, and so here, here we were digging in the car or in the car, looking for quarters that fell out of his pocket. I mean, we were so broke. I remember one month we had 30, this was back in 1990, 1989. We've been married almost 28 years this July, 28 years. And, but I remember, uh, so we had one month, $30 left over to buy groceries. 
I was like skipping all the way to the grocery store. I said, God, we're not in the negative for the first time. Glory to Jesus. 30 bucks, man. I mean, we went in with a calculator. We calculated. I mean, we bought the cheapest brand. You know, we never bought General Mills cereal. You know, it was fairy no name. <laughs> Whatever it was. You know, they have all these store now, you know. And, and so we didn't have anything. And, and we were believing God. And we had payments. I hated the first of the month because the rent was due. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and, so, and, and so then, so one, one day we went to our, we had a traveling ministry then. And we traveled in broken down cars. We had one car that if it idled too long, it caught fire. <laughs> it's an absolute truth. And I don't know why we never got that looked at, but one day we... <laughs> And we were broke. <laughs> we don't want to spend no money at the mechanic. And so, I re well, you know, so it, and we, we bought it for $400 used. And, and one day my husband was getting ready for work and, and he looked out the window and we, we live in Nebraska. Come on, you guys get snow here. And we, we didn't have a garage then. And so we left it outside to idle. It was a stick shift. And we had it in neutral and it sat out there and it idled. And he passed by the window and flames were shooting out of the hood. Now he grew up, his dad owned a fuel station. Fire and cars don't mix. And people said, what did you do? He said, he, my husband, fearless as he was, ran outside and grabbed snow. Thank God for the snow, Jesus. And grabbed snow and threw it all over the car and put it out. And then we just took off and it went to work. <laughs> we had to work. Don't make some money, we were broke. So, but we had a traveling ministry then and drove around in those cars preaching the gospel of little country towns. And one day we went to our post office box just hoping somebody would support us. And we walked in, those post office boxes are deep. We looked at the back and it was on Halloween. And we looked, looked, and all of a sudden, I looked at the back, I didn't think there was anything. And Hank said, look again. And I looked again, there's a little purple envelope, a little lighter than this carpet right here. And pulled it out, and in it's a card. And somebody said, I saw you preach at my Bible school a few years ago, and I heard you, and I've been meaning to send this for a long time. $8,000. Don't tell me that God dead in one day. We paid off our car, we paid every bill, and we went to supper, brother. Come on, somebody. It's time for there be, to be a transfer of God's provision. All right, next one, very quickly. The other divine transfer that's coming is a transfer of God's grace. Somebody say grace. grace. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden, remember? God cut up the coats of skin and he covered their wrongdoing, right? And so there was grace for their failure. So I believe this is a season where there's going to be grace and not so that you can, you know, we've heard all the teachings on grace and all of that. I'm not getting into that. But here's the deal. There is a grace that covers. You don't have to go around feeling beat up. Come on, put down condemned over every little thing. Come on, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. If there's any time right now, he's trying to make God's people second guess their every move. This is the time he's been doing it and enough is enough. There is a transfer of grace. Come on, the Bible says come boldly. To where? The throne room where there is? To obtain it. So there's a transfer of grace and grace also covers all these challenging seasons that we've been through. Come on, grace to, to get done what you need to get done. Grace to succeed, grace to finish your school, grace to have the tuition to pay for it. Hey! Number six, a transfer of supernatural victory. Somebody say victory. Come on, when Adam and Eve sinned, the devil looked like he had won and God stepped in on the scene. Love when God steps in. 
God stepped in on the scene. He said, devil gave him a prophecy. Said, yeah, you might be able to bruise the heel of that one that's coming. But I prophesy to you, he's going to squish your head. There is coming in 2017 a divine transfer of supernatural victory. Some of us are going to stop the cycle of going around the same old mountain and revisiting the same old problem and having to go up in the prayer line for the same old thing. I'm not saying there's not a time to get prayer and a repeat prayer or whatever. You know, let them rub you down with oil till something sticks. Probably be your hair stick together. We do anointing with oil in our church every year. And so at the end, we have all the elders pray over Hank and I. We anoint the whole church. And at the end, they pray over Hank and I. And I always say, not the hair. You can touch me here and here and here and here. Don't get it in the hair. Here's the thing. It's nothing wrong with having to work through issues. I get it. I get it. Some, some things you got to work it. you got to develop it. Some things are a process. I understand that. But there comes a point when we can only visit the same old problem for so long before we're just wore out. And Come on. God told Israel in Deuteronomy, the second chapter, he said, stop going around this same old mountain. You've gone around it long enough. Now it's just time to take a little detail, do detour and go northward. Go somewhere else. There is a divine transfer of supernatural victory that things that have held you in a cycle and a tornado of problems, come on, you feel attacked on every side. You feel like when you get victory in one area, then you're fighting something else. And then the minute you get your body healed, the kids act up. Come on, somebody. Uh, the minute that you, the kids get all fixed, now they're saying that there's layoffs on the job. It's like one thing after, a ne after the next. I believe in 2017, we're starting a season when that cycle stops. All right. Let me give you the last one. And this is what I believe is, is prophetically hovering over this house. And if it hovers over the house, it's hovering over your life in a divine way. Let me give you the last one. Number seven is the transfer into a new season. Now here's what happened. Eve, if you go to Genesis, the fourth chapter, the 25th verse, Abel had died at the hands of his brother Cain, was murdered. And Eve suddenly discovers that she is pregnant. And she said these words. Somebody say, she said. She said, God has appointed me another seed. That word appointed means to be placed, to be positioned. That she didn't, it, it wasn't about her. It was about God putting something in place for something that had been. Are you following me? Divine transfer. God brought Seth into her womb, whose name means placement or appointment. There was a divine time, a set time. Somebody say set time. Come on, God is a God of set times and set seasons. There was a set time for the birth of Isaac. There was a set time when God separated Israel from Egypt and their cattle died and, and Israel's cattle, they lived. There was a set time, come on, when Jesus was born. There is set times. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, I think it's ch uh, chapter 104, it says in Psalms that the moon is set in place for times and seasons. God has set times for the church. He has set times, watch this now, for you and me. There are set seasons. Somebody say, the former things have come to pass. And Eve said, God now has appointed for me, point at yourself. Come on, not just for you, not just for somebody else. God has appointed for me, watch it now, another seed. Because the old seed did not reach its full fruition. Abel died. 
May I propose in Mark the fourth chapter, there were three kinds of grounds where the seeds didn't make it. And I believe in 2017 over World Harvest Church and over your life, God is about to give people another seed that's going to fall on fruit bearing ground. But we spend all our time trying to fertile the dead seed. <laughs> and I get it. You know, you're trying to stand in faith. I sowed for that. I'm trying to stay with it, God, till it comes to pass. You know, sometimes the seed did. Can I say that? Sometimes you got to forget about the seed that the devil came immediately and took it out of your heart. Start over. God's about to transfer into your life a fresh seed. Come on, you, did, you didn't stop planting. All right, now I got to talk to the women. This is Daughters of Faith. You didn't stop planting plants and flowers in your yard because last year's seeds are dead. No, this is a fresh season. It's a new, new season. You know, every year, I know you guys live in snow country. We clean out all those old plants. And then every year I say, oh, that's a lot of work. I'm going to only buy a couple stuff this year. And then Brenda enters the garden center. Woo! In fact, I took Hank there the other day. We made three trips to the car. I said, you get that stuff in your basket and go out and buy it and come back and get me. And he said, all right. I said, I'll just get a couple more stuff. He came back in, car was full and more stuff. Every year I always tell him, I'm not going to get all that. And every year I buy everything. Because there comes a point when you have to focus on the fresh season of another seed. You can't live in what used to be. Come on. The former things have come to pass. Some seeds, I don't care how much you spoke, you declared, you fasted, you sowed. If the seed is dead, it's time for another seed. Just start fresh. Start over. Somebody shall start over. Eve had another seed. And his name also means payback. Now let me say this. Payback is not replacement. You know, you and your husband been divorced 30 years. You're not going to let me go back to it. And I'm not talking about replacement. But I'm talking about payback. I believe hovering over this house are new seeds. New seeds, new seeds of vision. Come on, there's some wayside seeds. They're over now. Okay, maybe they didn't bear fruit like you thought. Come on, because stop asking all the questions. Well, God, why? Why didn't that happen? Why didn't I get that job? I don't know. God apparently had another one for you. There's some other seeds. There's new seeds. Come on, don't worry about the door that closed. Worry about the one that God's about to open. Somebody say new seeds. Right now I prophesy over this house. And so the spirit says that even over this house, there have been great reaches and there have been great works of the move of my spirit. And there have been great things accomplished far and wide. And those things reach souls and change lives. But the Spirit says there is a new and a fresh season that is hovering over the atmosphere of this house. And it will not look like the former season. For the Lord says, I will put seeds in this place and in that place. There will be seeds over here and there will be some planted over there. And there will be houses of refuge and I will place the seeds. And even now in this time as the reach of this house has gone across the seas. The Lord says, watch what I do in local municipalities. Watch what I do in this area by way of fresh seeds. For I will plant the houses of worship and the houses of refuge. And it will be even as it was in the Mark, the fourth chapter when there was great fruit that came from it. And those that were on the outside were able to rest under its refuge. And so the Spirit said, the great seeds the new seeds being planted shall bear great fruit not just 30 not just 60 but a hundredfold and the Lord said you think you've seen souls up to now you haven't seen anything yet says the spirit 
for I'm about to shoot out seeds into the earth seeds into the earth and there will be houses of worship raised up around the world and so even now the spirit says watch the young for I will do a great thing not just with the young people but with the children for there is a reach with the children and in the children. For this is a desperate time and the Spirit of God has hovered over the land and saying, what about the young? The Spirit says, even this house as it reaches the children, so it shall reach the souls of families too. And so, heaven would say, don't look at your prodigals and see them after the flesh. Watch your words over those that have drifted away from the faith. For the Lord said in this new season beginning in 2017 and beyond, I'm bringing families together. I'm going to bring back prodigals that you thought there was no hope. And all of a sudden it'll click for my harvesting angels are even out. And I've sent my workers into the place of the field. And there are those that have prayed and sought me. And yes, the prodigals in the season of divine transfer shall come home. Rutava, pray in the spirit. Koranda, rendo porika yasuka. Some of you in this house are about to change your living location in this area. I see some, I see some even moving from one location in this city to another location in the city. And it shall be unto you, says the Spirit, a season of transfer where the old season, it will mark unto you the old season is finished. And a new season has begun. Ruta kosebo lukunda la babalsuka. Rota sholi payeso. Ah, pateke yosamanda el utagashumato. Oh, velo pro ha si hai moka. Rota saba. I feel the Lord tell me to tell you this now. Don't talk about what has been. Very simply. What has come to pass is over. Don't rehearse it. Don't revisit it. Don't keep reliving the memory. Come on, some of that is, you, you relive the memory, sometimes not because of the way it really was, but the way you had hoped it would be. Father, right now, Father, over these people, We draw a line in the realm of the spirit. Father, I see seeds fluttering out of the heavens over this place. I just heard the Lord say, the the harvest of world harvest, you haven't even seen the harvest yet. You've only seen pieces. You, you've seen some, some bumper crop. You, you've seen some pieces. You've seen some parts. But now the Spirit says you will see the acreages of fruit. And, 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 and now it shall be a supernatural thing. It won't have to be forced, but the fluttering of seeds, they are coming in over this house. I see it in the Spirit. I see it in the Spirit. Father, over these people right now, I prophesy, I declare, new season. The old season is over. It has come to pass. And something new is being declared out of the mouth of the prophets. They are declaring that something has shifted in this season and in this time. Yes, Lord. I feel to do something. I'm going to do stay standing. I'm going to invite Elder Canfield to come in a moment. This year, the Lord directed us to begin to declare. Now, here's the thing. The scripture says, says these words. It says, behold, the former things have come to pass and new, come on, say it with me. New things are being declared. You could say it this way. You could say new things are being prophesied. 
Okay, there's a new prophecy. Okay, some of you over your life, there's a new prophecy now. There's a new prophecy. 2017 year marks the year of a new prophecy. So the Lord dealt with us. He said, in this year, Hank and Brenda, I want you to go around to the places that the Lord opens for you and declare that there is a threefold cord bringing people into a new season that the devil, watch this now, cannot interfere with and not break. It'll be, uh, here's the thing. What happened with Eve, it was God placed it there. Are you with me? God is placing new seeds in your spirit. There's new vision coming now. There's new ideas. Ha! There's new resources. Come on. There's, there's new businesses to be unleashed. There's new places to go. Come on. God is going to deposit in your spirit something fresh and something new. And how you'll know, here's how you know it's, it's happened. Because you'll walk in and look at your checkbook or your, well, we don't use checkbooks anymore. We get on the bank online. You'll look at your balance and it might not be that much different, but something, something in you'll go, oh no, it's shifted. It's happened. Come on, there's a new seed in my spirit. There's something new. Come on, pastors of churches who pastor little churches of 50, 60 people, they'll walk in and maybe they'll see the same people on Sunday, but somehow they'll walk in and they'll see 500 new people. There's just, when, when new seeds are placed by God, the devil can't interfere with it. So the Lord told us, he said, you speak over the people that'll be like a threefold cord the devil can't break. And he gave us John, 3 John chapter 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you will. Foster. Say it again. Foster. Number one, that's the first chord. Number two, yeah. there's the second chord. Come on now. And number three, even as your soul, or that God will give you mental well being. I want to prophesy a threefold chord of a new season over your life before our elder comes. Let's speak over, lift your hands. If you need divine healing, you need health. I want to speak this and declare this over you. I feel led by the spirit. Oh God, I see the seeds fluttering out of heaven. Father, right now, there's about to be a new wave of healing coming on this house. If, you're, if you need healing, come on, touch you wherever it is. Hold on to it. I want you to see yourself well. Right now, I prophesy and decree health and strength and wholeness. I say because of the stripes and Jesus, you're made whole for he bore your sickness and he carried your diseases. I command your entire being to be healthy from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Every cell, come on, every cell. Somebody shout every cell. Every fiber, every organ, the bones, the blood, the immune system of your body. I prophesy they're healthy and strong. I command your body to function as God created. I bind all evil spirits of infirmity and disease. I speak against reoccurring ailments, weakness, aches, pains, disorders, fatigue, lethargy. And I say right now, you live long and healthy in the authority of Jesus' name. It's transfer. I speak the cord now and I prophesy of provision. Come on, if you need a financial miracle, you need provision. That you live continually. Somebody say continual. In the blessing and provision of God, I say the Lord's your shepherd and you shall not want or be in need of any good thing. For the Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. According to a Psalm 112 verse 3, I say wealth and riches shall be in your house. Come on, you know wealth and riches can be in the house of the righteous. I say that you will not lack any good thing. I command all evil spirits of poverty, debt, lack, emptiness, deficiency to lose their hold on you in Jesus' name. And I say the blessing of the tither and the sower rests now. It's transferred now upon this house. 
I speak gainful employment, contracts, provisions, income, revenues to be your portion and declare that you are highly favored and will always, somebody say always, always. have more than enough. Last one, put your hand on your head. I feel a prophesy that's in this house. Some of you have felt confusion. You're struggling, I see it, to make decisions. Right now I declare you live in a state of continual mental peace and well-being because you have the mind of Christ. Like tonight, I just heard the Lord say, some of you are gonna know after this what to do, what to do, what to do. You're gonna be able to decide what to do. I speak to your intellect, to your reasoning, your emotions, to your will, to your memory. And I say it comes under the divine guidance and command of the Holy Spirit. I break the power of every, every debilitating thought and memory. I command all evil, lying, mind-binding spirits to leave your mind in the name of Jesus. I speak against worry, anxiety, fears, phobias, insomnia, mental oppression, and restlessness. I bind discouragement and all sense of defeat, all failure, all rejection, obsessions, and insecurity from filling your mind and your thoughts and your emotions right now. I say with the divine transfer of heaven your mind is renewed and dwells upon the good the truth and the loveliness of heaven and I speak peace now to every thought upon your mind in the authority of Jesus name divine transfer has come to this house receive it in Jesus name if you believe it give God come on give him some crazy praise I'm ready. How about you? Amen. Come on, if you believe that it's a new season and there's a transfer that's been accomplished in this house and in your house, somebody lift up your voice and praise him here. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and give him a shout. Hey! My God. If you didn't get anything out of that, you need to wake up. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Brenda, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I'm different because of hearing that tonight. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Uh, she's talking about a transfer. She's talking about a new seed for a new season. I mean, the offering practically does itself. You don't need to be thinking about a seed that you sowed last week, last month, last year. You've got an opportunity to sow a new seed in a new season and get an unprecedented harvest. Hallelujah. You talk about a transfer about to be made. William McDowell was with us last night on, with Pastor Parsley on 120 Live. And one of the things that he talked about was he said rain doesn't start in heaven. Rain starts on the earth when water is gathered together and it evaporates into the atmosphere and then it precipitates as rain. There's a miracle of supply that God wants to give you, but it doesn't start in heaven. It starts here on earth with something that you do, an act of obedience starting tonight. Some of you may not have been here Sunday and you may not have had an opportunity to tithe this is your opportunity, but everybody that's here tonight has an opportunity to get a new seed in the ground because of a new season. There's a transfer that's on its way to you. Those of you that are watching on iHarv, there's a transfer that's on its way to you. But in order to get that transfer started, that process started, you've got to get a seed in the ground. I want to encourage you to do that tonight. Don't wait. Don't wait. You can give by check. You can give a cash gift in an offering envelope that you find in the pew in front of you. You can give by credit card or debit card there on that envelope. You can give by means of smart giving by texting WHC to 45777 on your smartphone, your tablet, your 
device, your electronic device, and you can give that way. But I want to encourage everybody, don't hear a word like this and let it just pass over you without taking advantage of the anointing that's available as a result of that word. Get a seed in the ground. God has placed in your hand a new seed for a new season, and he wants a divine transfer to be made in your life starting tonight. You don't have to wait till Sunday. As a matter of fact, somebody, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and prophesy this to you. Somebody's sowing a seed tonight and you're going to see the transfer made by Sunday. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to. That might be you I'm talking to. That's all right. But you got to get that process started. You got to respond to what it is that God's already done by getting a seed in the ground. Somebody say, I'm doing it. See, it's not just the hearers that are blessed. It's those who are doers of the word. Hallelujah. Get your offering in your hand. Come on, we're going to believe God together tonight. We're going to experience what Pastor Brenda Kuhneman was talking to us about. There is a transfer taking place. I want to be in position to receive every bit of it. Amen. Amen. You can do that tonight by getting a seed in the ground. A new seed for a new season. I'm not worried about the seed I sowed last week. I'm anticipating a harvest on the seed I'm sowing right now. Praise God. Get your seed in your hand. Let's believe God. Heavenly Father, thank you for this new season. Thank you for this new seed. Thank you for a transfer that's going to take place, a transfer of provision that goes beyond anything that I could have imagined. And God, I thank you that I can respond to what it is that you've already intended to do to bless me supernaturally in this new season as a result of a seed I'm sowing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Amen. Gentlemen, go ahead and wait on the people. I'm going to ask Harvest Music Live to hold off just for a moment because I got a couple things I need to share with you. And then we've got a video to share with you. But, uh, I got several things I need to mention to you while the ushers are waiting on you and while you're sowing your new seed in this new season. We've got coming up on May 13th, that's this Saturday, on Harvest Prep.